Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. I am in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out one of my all-time favorite vehicles, a 2016 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack. Absolutely amazing vehicle. It sounds good, it looks good, and this one happens to be in a really amazing color, the B5 blue color. So let's go ahead and check it out. Check out these 20 inch forged aluminum wheels, satin black, almost like a really dark gray color. Really looks amazing with this vehicle. And you have the Brembo four piston brake calibers in the front and the two piston Brembos in the back, as well as four wheel disc brakes, all four are ventilated and slotted. So I'm taking a look at the front wheel here and some people get this confused. Uh, here's your Brembo brake caliper, which is awesome. Uh, one of the best in the world, and probably the best as far as calipers go. Now the disc brakes, this is what's called the rotor, okay? And you can see it has these lines here, those are the slot. So that's a slotted rotor. Ventilated rotors are basically two, you can see right here, I don't know if you can see in there, but you can see there's a plate here and there's a plate on the inside and they're separated with bars of metal with air between them and that's a ventilated disc brake now you all, some people get those confused with a slotted or a cross drilled so this one's not cross drilled but it is slotted and ventilated and that's basically all four wheels are just like this one the name of this color is b5 blue pearl coat absolutely stunning color very popular so the look in here on the front you can see it has the uh, projector headlights with the halos Accent, accenting those and the headlights are projector low and high beam with HID powered bulbs. You also have halogen powered fog lights there at the bottom that, that are also projectors. Everything in the grill is satin color including that chrome accent there. It's a satin chrome accent that's split in the middle. They started that in 2015 which really made a big difference to me anyways. We also have this satin black uh, decal here, hood decal, which is looking pretty awesome. The Scat Pack emblem here on the side of the vehicle is one of my favorites. It's really neat. has a little bumblebee flying. You can see it has like a little engine thing going on with the wheels. Absolutely love it. So this is what the key looks like. You have the lock and unlock buttons. You can open up the trunk and it does have the remote start, including a panic button. There's the Dodge emblem on the other side. You also have a physical key on the inside by using that little latch and you can slide it out but this is a proximity key it's designed to basically keep it in your pocket the whole time and you can use the vehicle without having to take the key out of your pocket or your purse so walking up to the vehicle as long as you have the key nearby it could be in your pocket or whatever to lock the doors you just push this button right here it'll lock the doors if you want to unlock it you just put your hand underneath the handle here and you can it'll unlock for you so it senses the key nearby, that's why they call it a proximity key, and it senses your hand position and allows you to use the vehicle. So here's the inside of the passenger door. Pretty much everything black except for that metallic accent there and your Alpine premium sound system emblem there. But everything's soft to the touch. I mean, just everything you can pretty much touch besides down here, there's some hard plastics, but it's very comfortable and classy and high high quality feeling i guess you can say so you have a little storage pocket there a bottle holder here and then your door lock controls and window control you also have a little pocket here in the back so here's your threshold here and you have manually adjusted seats here on the passenger side and these are napa leather and suede seats they're heated and cooled very comfortable seats and they're soft very soft you have these bolsters here on the side but they're very comfortable they're not intrusive on your body you get in there you're very comfortable you have the stitching right here in like a gray color it's like a French design stitch and then you have the uh, the smooth Napa leather here on the outside and then the suede here in the middle and you do see the uh, the perforations there in the center that it helps out with the ventilated seats and the heated seats kind of getting the temperature change that you want you have the RT emblem embroidered in the back of the seat You can see you have a little net pocket there as well as a 12 volt power supply. Massive amounts of legroom here in the front and the 
floor mat hooks in place, so that really helps out with it keeping it in place. You have a lockable glove compartment, and it opens up, and you have this kind of shelf organizer, so you can keep it organized. Up here it's smooth plastic, you have these little shelves. Down here it's felt lined, and so I always have a problem, and I think a lot of people do, as far as organizing their glove compartment. Usually people just stuff it in there, but this you can actually organize it with little shelves. So let's go ahead and take a look here in the back seats. Now the back seats, when you have the front seats all the way back, you have pretty much zero leg room. So, except for there in the middle. But basically, to have somebody in the back seat, you're gonna have to compromise a little bit on the front leg room, just the nature of the vehicle. But the back seats are contoured. They have the, uh, the suede and the Napa leather, just like the, uh, the front seats. They also have the uh, latch system for car seats. You have a center armrest there with cup holders. You have a padded armrest there. But just overall, the back seats are very comfortable if you just have a little bit of leg room there. Of course, like I said, you're gonna have to compromise a little bit on the front. But as far as just overall comfort, they are superb in the back as well. So let's go ahead and take a look here in the back. You have that deck lid spoiler in black and it's perfect size as far as I'm concerned. It's not too big, not too small. And then you have the split tail lights. Absolutely amazing LED tail lights. You gotta check out my night video. Actually, I'm gonna need to make a new one, but I have a 2015 Challenger at night showing you the interior and exterior lighting. You check that out. So back here, you can see it has the chrome tipped dual exhaust. You have the parking sensors back here, these little round circles. You also have a backup camera that's kind of hidden right in here in the spoiler. And I like the way it has a nice high position so you can see really good behind you. So while we're back here, we've got to use the remote start because we've got to listen to the exhaust. So we just double tap that button and it starts right up. All right, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so the Scat Pack really has a nice rumble. It's uh, it's a little bit. The Hellcat is a little bit loud. You know, it's, you know, it's very aggressive sounding. This one has a really smooth rumble, but it's still aggressive enough when you you know give it the gas and all that stuff. But anyways, we'll get into the exhaust. <laughs> Maybe another video of different exhaust styles. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look here in the trunk push this button right here you can also use the button on the key if you want to but pushing this button is kind of hidden under here as long as you have the key with you you can go ahead and open it up you can see everything's padded here on the inside nice big opening and the trunk is massive really I mean for a two-door car this is really good the opening is good uh, you have plenty of space here to the left and right so you can kind of cram stuff in there if you need to you can also fold down the seats in a 60-40 split fashion, just in case you need a combination of cargo and passenger space. Uh, some of the other challengers, other packages and stuff, you'll have a subwoofer under here. And that's what I was looking for. But anyways, you can see it has the battery back here and no spare tire. It does have the tire inflator kit. And of course you can buy a spare tire kit for this vehicle, but, uh, but it comes like this, no spare tire. But you do have this cargo space under this cover here which is pretty awesome kind of adds to your cargo space and it keeps it out of the way as well now the fuel door is on the driver's side and it has this little cap that opens up like so and it has a little tether which hangs right here so you don't dangle the cap down and scratch your awesome paint um, now some people mentioned in my previous video that i did in this particular color they said that they would prefer to have a black cap but of course this is easily changed uh, this 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 bezel right here so whether you you want the uh, the chrome or the black really it's not it's not a big deal it's easy to change starting the vehicle without the remote start you get in the vehicle put your foot on the brake and hold it and push this button so here's the floorboard on the driver's side, you can see the mat hooks in place in two positions. 
and you also have a place to put your left foot right in here foot actuated parking brake and then you have the aluminum pedals with the rubber accents for the accelerator and brake pedal there plenty of leg room as you can see everything out of your way so let's go ahead and take a look under the hood so to open the hood you just reach in a little bit to the right of center right in here and there's a little latch on the bottom you just move it towards the inside and you lift up just a few inches and it goes up the rest of the way by itself all right so there it is there's the beast powered by srt 6.4 liter 485 horsepower v8 paired to an eight speed torque flight automatic transmission that will blow your mind the the power of the engine the sound of the engine and the way the transmission shifts is really impressive you have to take one for a test drive if you've never experienced it before Go ahead and take a look on the inside of the driver's door. It's just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have the power door lock controls there, power window control controls, and then your side mirror adjustments. You just pick a side, and then you can adjust it with this little pad. So let's see how fast the windows go up and down. So you actually have to hold the automatic window to go up, and then you one touch down. The driver's seat is a combination of powered and manual the manual part is tilt and then you have the power adjustment here to go forward and back and up and down uh, that kind of stuff you also have a four-way lumbar adjustment powered which is making the seat even more comfortable okay so right in here is your headlight controls you have an automatic off parking light and headlight and to turn on your fog lights you just push in like so your interior ambient light and your dimmer switch for your gauges are right here side by side and there's a trunk release button there you also have a powered tilt and telescoping steering column which is really really easy to use even when you're driving uh, you can kind of fine-tune it which is and do it safely see that little triangle there on the side mirror that is your blind spot detector it will actually illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot as you're driving there's a sensor right back in here somewhere and it'll sense as a sense if there's a vehicle sitting in your blind spot while you're driving it'll illuminate that little triangle if you go to put your turn signal on in that direction it will also give you an audio, audio uh, audible warning in the car and just kind of make sure to let you know that there's a car there before you start changing lanes another portion of that feature is a cross path detection system so if you're parked in a perpendicular parking spot and you start to back out, sometimes there's vehicles next to you and you can't really see around those vehicles. Well, the sensors in the back of the vehicle will, will let you know if there's a vehicle coming and it'll tell you which side it's actually coming from. So that's a really cool feature. So that's called the cross path detection and blind spot monitoring system. Let's go ahead and take a look here on the inside. Very impressive interior, high quality. Ever since the 2015 models, I have been in love with the interior and exterior of this car. One of my favorite vehicles on the road. So before we go into too much details, let's go ahead and take a look here at the window sticker just so we can kind of quickly look at it. And you can use the pause button in case you want to get some more details. Now the steering wheel is a leather wrapped super high quality with the stitching there on the inside very good thickness you have the bolsters right in here but just overall it's extremely comfortable to to handle and to drive uh, it's not digging into your buns from being too thin or or whatever it just feels really high quality and looks really good so you can see it has quite a few buttons you have your cruise control here on the right and on the back side you can see it has the paddle shifters the plus and minus there so as you're driving, you can cycle through the eight gear ratios if you want to. But on the very back, just under that, is this toggle switch up and down in the center button. And the one on the right is your volume for your radio. So you can adjust your volume with that. And the center button will allow you to cycle through 
AM, FM, satellite radio, your different audio uh, sources there. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, in that same position, you have that toggle switch up and down, uh, but it controls, you can go through the radio stations, and then the center button will cycle through your presets, which is really handy. So this is keeping your hand on the wheel and able to do stuff at the same time, which is really good. Okay, so here on the bottom of the left side, you see you have, you have your Bluetooth phone. You can answer, hang up there. You also have the voice recognition system, which allows you to do all kinds of stuff, including call people, but you can also change the radio, all kinds of different things. Uh, there's a whole booklet on the different commands that you can say using the voice recognition, and it keeps you staying productive, answering calls, making calls, etc., while you keep your eyes on the road and hands on the wheel, which is all good. So these buttons right here correspond with the menu system right in here in the center, which we'll get to in just a minute. Your windshield wiper controls are here on the left side, as well as your turn signal. So let's take a look here at the gauges. Absolutely awesome gauges. You can see it has that red circle around and this concave design, kind of a classic muscle car look. You have your RPMs there on the left, your speedometer, which goes up to 180 by the way on the right. Your fuel gauge is here on the right and your temperature gauge for your engine coolant is there on the left. But right here in the center you can see it says the speedometer and that's your digital speedometer. You also have your outside temperature there and your range, how long you can drive before you have to get gas. Now this is all customizable. For one thing we're going to use these buttons right here, the up and down, the OK. And I'm going to kind of cycle through and show you this is part of a bigger menu system. So this digital speedometer is just one option. I'm going to scroll down so you can see. See at the top it says speedometer. Now you see a little one next to it showing you as part of a menu system. So let's scroll down and then we can. This is the vehicle info screen. And you see that little bar at the bottom? If I go to the right and left, you can see the little bar shows that there's more options. So we have the engine power, we have the tire pressure. And that's high uh, when the vehicle um, comes in off the truck. Apparently they haven't uh, checked the tire pressure yet. It's a little high and they have to adjust it in the, uh, in the service department. I guess they hadn't done that yet. And then you go to the coolant temperature, transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, oil life, battery voltage, air intake temperature, and your engine torque. That's pretty awesome. And here it goes back to your engine power. So I'm going to scroll down again. This will take us to our... <laughs> this is pretty interesting right here. Um, this is your performance pages. But you notice it says top speed 171 miles per hour. Okay. That's telling... That's saying that this vehicle has been driven... That's the highest speed that's been driven. And... That is crazy because the vehicle only has three miles yet it's showing a top speed of 171 miles per hour and there's a reason why that show is that showing and it's not normal you that's I've never seen that before nobody at the dealership seen that before but I there's a reason why and the reason is they were uh, testing the gauges in the factory and they forgot to reset it so it's showing a hundred and seventy one miles per hour top speed on a brand new vehicle so it hasn't been driven that far uh, so <laughs> thought that was that just really shocked me when I first saw it so let's go ahead and scroll to the right and see what else we see in the performance okay so we have a 0 to 60 miles per hour timer with a reaction timer as well we have a 0 to 100 eighth of a mile timer quarter mile timer, braking distance, and current G-forces, peak G-forces, so this is the most that the vehicle has been in, has had to endure, lap timer, and lap history. Then it scrolls back to that ridiculous 171 miles per hour number. Okay, so let's scroll down, and there's the, your fuel economy, you have an average, and this is all skewed, this is not, this is not, this vehicle only is three miles, and as you drive it, it will adjust itself, because this vehicle gets 25 on the highway, so uh, it gets much better than that. So then you have 
two of them there let's scroll down again this is your trips so you have your trip will tell you your mileage that you've driven mile average miles per gallon and your time which is cool and you have two of them a and b scrolling down this is what your radio is doing scrolling down again this is what any stored messages will show up here and that you're set up there's all kinds of stuff you can set up as far as your corners the things on the corner upper left upper right in the center you can all adjust that if you want to then it goes back to your digital speedometer so that's kind of a quick rundown of what that screen does there in the center now of course you don't have to go in there and check everything if there's anything out of spec it will pop up and let you know okay so over here is your 8.4 inch touchscreen and right now it's in the radio screen and check it out it has that background there and I'm pretty sure you can you can adjust that you can change that background to something different if you want to um, I haven't done it yet on this vehicle I hadn't played around with it but that's my understanding so you have your radio AM FM satellite radio you can adjust your audio it also has speed adjusted volume equalizer all that good stuff media so you can play play music it doesn't have a cd player okay so a lot of people were like hey where's the cd player cds have been obsolete for 15 years so <laughs> so that's i'm surprised they're still in some vehicles but anyways there's no cd player that has a usb input auxiliary bluetooth and sd card input so there's lots of ways of playing music through the sound system there's your heated seat and ventilated seat controls there. You also have a heated steering wheel. You can always turn the screen off if it's just distracting you. It's just as simple as that. And you just touch the screen to turn it back on. And then you have a whole slew of settings in here that you can adjust if you want to. Let's go to your apps. Now in the 16 models, the apps are a lot more, they're, they're here in the center and they're a lot more comprehensive here. Can make this vehicle a Wi-Fi hotspot. You can go into your performance pages, um, all kinds of stuff right here, and you can go into your settings. Lots of different things. Your climate controls here. You have a dual zone right now. It's synced, but you can unsync that, and you can have you know your different temperature on each side, where you want the air to blow. Your fan speed here. Your air conditioning recirculate the air. Front and rear defrosters, all that good stuff on this screen. There's another button to turn off the screen if you want to. And then your phone. Once you pair your phone with the system, you'll have access to phone, your phone book, your recent calls. This is all off your phone now. And you can also transfer it back to your phone if you want to have a private conversation and not have other people in the vehicle hear your conversation. You have some favorites there at the top, which will, you know, that way the people that you call all the time will show up there. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the screen. Now there's more to it because this one has the Super Track Pack special button right here. So I push that button and we have the performance pages and performance controls popping up here, which is pretty awesome. Now you have this uh, launch mode, which I'm not going to activate. I think you have to have 500 miles before you can activate it anyway. Um, but you can adjust your launch RPMs your drive mode is right here. Um, you have your sport mode where you can, your um, you have a sport mode for your engine and transmission. Your paddle shifters, you can turn those on and off. Your traction control, you can have normal or sport. And then you, your steering, you can have sport or normal or comfort. Comfort would be the easiest to turn. Normal is kind of normal and then sport is stiff, real stiff, so you can feel the road. Okay, so here's all the stuff that you saw on the performance pages between the steering wheel. You have your timers, your gauges, um, your G-force meter, and stuff like that. Let's take a look at the engine. So we have what the engine's doing now. Isn't that cool? Kind of gives you the bar as you're going. And then you have this G-force meter, which will kind of tell you what you're doing in real time, which is awesome. And then you have two different gauges that kind of active 
actively stay up so you can keep an eye on them. Right there and there. Your timers. Current, last, best. And then you have home there, which is showing a picture of the vehicle. You can show, show look at pictures, I guess, of it. And that's part of one of your apps, is the, uh, the performance pages. So, awesome stuff. Okay, so let's go down here, and we have a traditional knob for your radio, for your, for your volume, and tune through the stations. You have a back button. This is for certain screens on, on, on here you can back out of. Okay, so the, for the people that want to really have fun with the vehicle and be a little bit on the risky, dangerous side, you have two things. You have the sport mode, which will tell the vehicle that you want to be in the highest performance possible. Now, it also turns the traction control into a sport mode. Now, you can do that as well by pushing this button. Now, if you push and hold this button, the traction control button off, takes a second it completely turns the stability control off so you have to be really careful you really don't want to do that unless you're like doing donuts and going really wild um, but you can do that if you want to it can always you know push it again to turn it back on now you do have some redundant buttons down here for your climate control for your temperature and your air conditioning and your front and rear defrosters and your fan speed if in case you need that so here's your shifter. You have this little storage pocket. Perfect place to put the key, by the way. So the shifter is very comfortable. And we'll go ahead and put it in reverse. We can take a look at the backup camera. And it also shows that the parking sensors are active. So if there's something back there, it's going to beep at me, but also show me where the actual thing is as I'm backing up. All right, let's continue down. There's neutral, there's drive. That's our normal drive position. Now you can cycle through the gear ratios by pushing the paddle shifter, but if you accidentally bump into it, you just push and hold the plus and it'll go back in the drive. But if you want to manually cycle through the gears with the shifter, you just put it over here in a manual mode and you can bump it up and down like a ratchet shifter, just like the old timey ratchet shifter. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so here's your cup holders and you got to see those these at night they have this like ambient light going on here that looks awesome looks really awesome and the soft to the touch armrest here with the French stitching which is looking awesome and pretty much this the whole dash is soft to the touch it has like this nerf feeling I guess you can say and it's a non-reflective surface but anyways there's your armrest and very cushy and comfortable and you can share it with your passenger opens up right here you have the Dodge Brothers emblem there in the center you have a felt lined storage compartment goes down in there pretty good you have a 12 volt power supply that stays on all the time it's connected directly to the battery and this is where you'll find your auxiliary USB and SD card inputs you also have a place to put wires in and out of this compartment in case you want to charge your cell phone or whatever All right, so here's your rearview mirror, and it has a auto dim feature, and it's auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor. So I don't know if you can see that. But you have the assistance button, and this is like literally anything. If you want to learn how to do something, or if you have a question about your vehicle, you push that button. It's gonna take you straight to a certain part to a person in in Dodge. It's gonna explain stuff to you, and also it's good for your roadside assistance too. You also have a 911 button. Now this vehicle has its own cellular connection. So it can actually call 911 even if you don't have your phone with you. You push that button, it'll give you about 10 seconds to back to stop it here on the screen in case you accidentally press it. But it'll actually connect you to a 911 operator directly, which is really good. So right on, you see those little bumps on the top of the rearview mirrors, or on the rearview mirror, those are your speakers for your Bluetooth system, which is cool. You also have the home link garage door opener controls there. You have some tap lights right here. Place to put your shades in there with a little cushion to protect your sunglasses. So the visors, this one's covered up. But here on the right, you can see it has the mirrors and the lights. 
has this little thing that sticks out to help out with keeping the sun out of your face. Let's take a look at the visibility here in the back. So you can see there's kind of a blind spot right there. You can see it directly out, but there's pretty good blind spots there and there. But the blind spot monitoring system helps out with that. Also the backup camera, in addition to that, the parking sensors. So as long as you're aware of the blind spots, uh, you can compensate for that. Alrighty, so there you go. 2016 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. Awesome vehicle. I absolutely love it. It's a pleasure to have an opportunity to show off a vehicle like this. So thank you for watching. And thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina for allowing me to show off in such an awesome vehicle. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.